Welcome back to another round of Daniel Rambles, where we present ideas, games, different conversational topics, and different ways of thinking about the world so that you can break out of whatever patterns you may be stuck in. So today, Janine and I are going to be playing a whole round of the ABC game. So if we could just get a word of inspiration from the audience, we are going to get started. Africa. Africa. All right, that's a great start. African clothing, that's what I'm wearing, Janine. So funny. Boy, you really do clean up. You know, uh, it's not just that you're here, it's that you're actually like part of the show now. Chums like me get a upgrade every now and again. <laughs> Don't have to tell me about it, man. Every once in a while, I think I do have to tell. Now, funny you mentioned that, you know, me being on an Afrocentric type of show and you dressing Afrocentric. Um, I, I don't think I have to remind you too much about it, though. I think you have a good idea. Good idea? Hasn't it been obvious so far? I don't know if it was obvious enough, but let's think about something else. Okay, just, just hear me out. Uh, with who you are and where we are living, does this not seem like it's playing out the way it should be? You know what seems like it's playing out the way it should be? Let me take a wild guess. You and me? Me and you. Ah, okay. Well, no one actually is perfect in a lot of these situations, so thank you for letting me get a second chance at it. Okay, good. Please don't just use good when we're talking about like futures that are extraordinary. Quiet, you. Seems to be that way. True, true. I can't actually argue with that. This is actually a pretty good setup we got here, man. You. Understood. <laughs> Very understandable. All right, I think I've lost this round. I, I, I said you, the letter you, but it was supposed to spell Y-O-U. I thought you were going to be like universally or something. I don't know. Or... My brain was just like clocking out. I think all the hours of sleep are just having me at ample shapies. It's okay. I thought it was interesting that you were talking about you being on this show, and then I'm like, this is the only outfit that I have that actually has like no printer. That's kind of Afrocentric. Cool. Yeah, and then you're actually completely decked out, and I'm wearing like normal clothes. All right, Miss J9 Superstar, what's it like to be a wild woman in wealth? Oh my gosh, well, just the fact that I have wild women who are willing to drive out of their way to help do my makeup and have me hear what it's like for them to be creating and not only commemorating, but really celebrating what it means to have people in their lives start to identify with the changes that they're starting to have in their world. It feels <coughs> not necessarily wild, more welcoming and just being natural and not needing to change or disrupt or add anything that's not already part of me. That's what it feels like to be wild, just bare and essential. And I'm literally getting goosebumps right now thinking about this. We're also getting paid and feeling damn sexy about it. Sounds like a hell of a metamorphosis. Yeah, well, what does it feel like to be around such wild women these days, Daniel? Feels inspired. Being around the type of energy that, the yes and type of energy, not the people who are saying, no, what about, or, oh, but what if? That type of energy, not all about that. Too many human beings automatically revert to or default to uh, scapegoat, devil's advocate. Let's not even think about the next step because I want to tell you why you can't do what you want to do. See, I love that you say that specific because some of those people certainly have a ability to change. Although, yes, if you have too many, some of them really feel like that has to be their reality. And then it's hard for them to start having these shifts where they realize that all of it's made up. So if enough of them agree that they're going to shift their world into a focus that doesn't work mm -hmm. or create, they will consistently be in that world of just non-creation versus what you're saying, these yes-anders and these believers of magic and their own manifestation, the more you're starting to have them, it's good every once in a while to have the naysayers so you can poof and feel really good when you're able to have them then become manifestors themselves. But you're right, if you, if you have too many naysayers, it's hard to have them become yay 
stay sayers because they just want to keep leading into this mm -hmm. world of darkness and we want to bring them to the light. I mean, I should know. I used to be one of the worst naysayers. What was that like? Skeptic. Oh, it's, it's a form of paralysis where you always want to drag everyone down to your level instead of elevating to their level. Mm -hmm. But eventually you realize that you can do better. Yes. yes. The paralysis of mediocrity does not have to dig its claws into you forever. Yes. It can be more like Jonathan Livingston Siegel. Yes. Yes. And that's all, folks. That was a very long episode. Of what? Your first one's the Danny Ramo, right? Were you talking to the pillows? Fine, can we do another one then? I'll wear a different vest and not this one. If you want. Okay. Don't make you happy, Kins. Yeah. I can't believe how shitty that little camera is, though. Did you see the quality of the video on it? No, I did not. How it, would I have? I don't know. Magic. Moment. When two hearts are merry, okay, ready? magic. Yeah. Do you want me to be in it right away, or I don't know why I like this idea of me popping in.